Hi friends and welcome to Starry Hilders Homestead. I am so excited to share with you, friends, something that I have been doing since I was a little girl. And that is, well, one of them is berry picking. I used to go out and pick blueberries with my mother and, and raspberries and blackberries. But as I got older, I also learned something a little bit more when I was in the forest. It wasn't just the berries that fascinated me. It was everything else, like hmm, the leaves, uh, the bark of the tree. I used to actually pretend I was a, a doctor and I would give the trees uh, shots. <laughs> really, I, I really did that. With all of these plants, I soon discovered that the Native Americans and we had the Ojibwe tribe in uh, Wisconsin, where I was originally from, used so many of those plants, not just for eating, no, but also for medicinal purposes. So when they would walk through the forest and look out at the forest floor, they just didn't see edible wild food that they could be preserving and feeding themselves. They also saw they saw cures for ailments. And this is where traditional medicine began with the Native Americans. So, on our self-sustainable homestead, we continue that tradition. Why? Because as a nurse, hmm, I know, we too often depend on medication. We really do. We feed ourselves with Tylenol, ibuprofen, uh, we get diarrhea, we take Pepnobismo, we have an upset stomach, we take Pepsid AC. Uh, you know, there's just a barrage of medicines and pharmaceuticals that we are feeding our bodies. Why? Why are we overlooking the natural benefit of the food that is in the wild and more often than not at our disposal and very easy to harvest very very easy to harvest and to identify I'm going to share some of my knowledge that I have gained throughout the years and with my nursing background offer you friends some real good tips on learning how to identify these wonderful edibles and medicinal plants so that you can put them to use and become more self-sustainable and not rely on the pharmaceutical companies and the Walgreens and the Walmarts, which may not always be there. This is a great skill to learn. So let's get going because today I'm going to talk about, and I don't know if you didn't know these leaves, the thimbleberry or the muckamuck. <laughs> yeah. Or they call it the salmon berry. So the awesome thing about learning how to forage in the wild is really learning the history behind a lot of these plants. And this thimbleberry again uh, came uh, from the Native Americans and it was actually for some of them a symbol of prestige. Yeah, they used to have big festivals over the thimbleberry and the coastal Indians actually used to dry the berries and they'd make them into little cakes and these cakes actually um, they would chop the, the the pieces of the little cake and they'd add them to soups so they really needed the thimbleberry to sustain throughout the winter they used it for their food and they used it for their medicine thimbleberry isn't that gorgeous this is we have we have thimbleberries all over our property and I'm just gonna pan this spot right here they have a very broad leaf and they have deep red fruit. See? They almost look like a raspberry. These are actually a, a parvi floris. That's what they're called. It, it, they're, it, that means small flower. And in the early season, all of these little fruits will have a little white flower on them. And they almost look like, the, the flower actually almost looks like a, a strawberry flower. Now it is so pretty and so delicate. So you know it will be a thimbleberry, not just from its leaves, but it has a very distinct white flower. And as I pan over here, you'll see those little white flowers. Look at how pretty they are. That is a thimbleberry flower. And they are kind of almost like a little 
a little vine when they pop out of the middle of the mountains right now where there is lush fields, I'm just scanning here, of thimbleberry bushes. And you will see, look at the terrain I'm in. It's all rocky over there. And right at the side of the trail are just tons of thimbleberry bushes. So you can really find them in a wide variety of topography. Kind of cool about the thimbleberry about the thimbleberry is that they are enhanced by fire. So I kind of wonder about our piece of property here because they are a very prolific seed and they are spread and regenerated by fire. So if there has been fire, this is what you will see. A lot of thimbleberries, um, they, they just spread. And the seed is stimulated by fire and it germinates um, in these areas in large numbers. And they actually use them, they use the thimbleberry seed um, for seed banking after a fire. Because when they take root, they just, they just spread. I see all of these beautiful thimbleberries and I have to wonder to myself, you know, you think about the thimbleberry and what I just said about fire and they, they regenerate with fire. They love fire. Uh, they use it for, uh, you know, reestablishing areas, reseeding. And I'm thinking, I've got a lot of thimbleberries around here. So did we have a lot of wildfire coming through this area? Uh, is that why there's so many thimbleberries? What happened way up there in the wilderness behind our property? And this goes for hundreds and hundreds of miles. So the cool thing is when you get out in nature and you start learning how to identify um, edibles and plants and berries, it can tell a little bit um, about the area and give you a history. You know, there's a lot of history in plants. Uh, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So just even here in my little patch of property, which is 13 acres, but abutted to millions of acres, there's a story to be told. And it's pretty cool. So let's talk about, uh, number one, the leaf of the thimbleberry. This is a very broad leaf. And the cool thing about this leaf is you can pick it and dry it. And I've got, uh, you know, my natural little um, homemade dryer. <laughs> so what I will do is, is put these out in my uh, dryer outdoors. They take a couple of days to dry. And then what the Indians used to do is they would crush this leaf. Now this leaf can be used for a lot of tonics. Um, one of the most popular uses for the thimbleberry leaf is for antiemetics, which means if you're nauseated, you have an upset stomach, this really soothes the stomach, helps with diarrhea. Um, there's other uses too, uh, which I love about um, all of these wild edibles. Uh, you can actually put the thimbleberry in a, uh, like your hair shampoo, you can use it as a hair rinse. Uh, you can actually put it on your face as an astringent. They're good for um, pimples and blackheads. <laughs> uh, some really cool uses. Um, and also the shoots. Now, if I can get, if you look close, um, the shoots here actually in the springtime are a little bit more young and tender. You can cut these shoots like asparagus and you could actually eat the shoots and they're really high in vitamin C. You know, the great thing about all these wild edibles is they have a lot of uh, good nutrient value in them. And that's why the Native Americans would use them. Uh, it wasn't just for tonics and medicinal purposes, but they provided great nutrition. And you will also see um, shortly, I will be posting a video on my thimbleberry and service berry jam. Uh, you can make jams and jellies. You can make juices, um, wine. People have used uh, thimbleberries for wine making. So there is a wide variety of uses for the berry. There's a wide variety of uses for the leaf and even the stems. So the whole plant, when it comes to this thimbleberry, can be utilized. Pretty cool, isn't it?
tips is really, really easy. Now, this is my outdoor dehydrator. Nothing fancy. I've made it with my screens. I've got lots of other dehydrators that I just use the sun and the wind, and it works really well. But one thing I want to point out real quickly, when you are dehydrating your thimbleberry leaves, make sure they are 100% dried before you make them into a tea. Sorry tip with using this wonderful thimbleberry. Here's the root. I seep the root in two cups of water, put them in my ball jars, and when it is ready, usually in a couple weeks, a, a, like a tablespoon of this water, <laughs> They say you can wash it down with a little wine, which I, I would never recommend, but it's actually supposed to be good for diarrhea and dysentery and an upset stomach. So that is just a starry tip, but do your own research on the uses of the root. You can also use this as an astringent, and you can add it to your hair rinse, and it's really good externally for your skin and your hair. So lots of Lots of cool uses, right? <laughs> right, Sprig? <laughs> so he doesn't really care, does he? Berry. And you can start doing cool stuff like making tea and drying the leaves and drying the berries and making jams. Mm, so cool. So keep coming back because uh, Starry is going to be foraging all summer. This is what I do. It starts in early spring and it doesn't end until fall. So there will be more berries and more edible foods that I will be showing you from our mountaintop home. God bless everybody.